we have a special treat today. We have a, a visitor from Israel. And I met Dr. Shahak last year at the uh, International Society for Art Science meeting in Brisbane. And she's been working in the area of uh, photoselective nets for many years and is really a, a world authority in this area. And so I'll share a little bit on her bio and then introduce the title of her presentation and then she'll be able uh, to present that. There will be time for question and answer afterwards. And if we have a lively discussion that goes beyond 4 o'clock, we can continue. <laughs> because she's here for a short time and we'd like to make sure that if you have uh, questions or, or input that you'd like to share, that we can give you that opportunity to do that. So um, Dr. Shahak is heading a research group for plant light interaction at the Institute of Plant Sciences, the Agricultural Research Organization of the Volcani Center in Bet Dagan, Israel. Her expertise includes overhead netting and photoselective netting of ornamental, vegetable, and fruit crops. Also photosynthesis, photoinhibition, and light stress, and photomorphogenesis and practical horticulture. In addition to her own research, Dr. Shahak has served as the chair of the Citriculture Department at the ARO, as the scientific director for the Northern R&D Center, and the ARO assistant director for regional research and development. And she's currently chairing the ISHS sub-working group for photoselective netting. She's here with her husband, uh, Nadav Rabi. We welcome you as well. And um, so her, the title of her presentation today is uh, Photoselective Netting, Improving Fruit Production While Coping with Environmental Constraints. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Shahak. And uh, we'll try and get this everything going forward for you, hopefully. OK. It should be good. Thanks a lot. OK. Welcome. Thank you, Des, for the invitation to come here. and. Uh, Thank you all for attending. It's a great pleasure to be here in Wenatchee, uh, second time, I guess. Um, and uh, I will uh, try to give an overview on the photoselective netting, few words of introduction on the technology, and then uh, I picked uh, the more relevant uh, aspects uh, that relate to uh, fruit trees. Yeah, so uh, the need to protect uh, horticultural crops is uh, increasing worldwide. Uh, why is that? It's because on one hand, global, oops, <laughs> um, global uh, climate change, because of global uh, climate changes, increased frequency of extreme event, climate events. Uh, in addition, there are urbanization processes that are pushing uh, agriculture towards marginal areas and uh, limited uh, resources, uh, a major one being um, water uh, that is uh, becoming more and more limiting in many parts of the world. On the other hand, market demands uh, for better quality and less chemicals um, and environment-friendly uh, practices uh, all uh, make uh, uh, agriculture and horticulture uh, more uh, harder. So uh, protected cultivation is the solution for all the above. Um, netting uh, within the protected cultivation is the most efficient way, I think, to protect uh, extens extensive uh, crops against excessive radiation, uh, too much light, too much heat, uh, by providing shading, uh, protect from hail, from wind, from all kinds of flying pests. And um, so um, based on the need uh, and the potential of uh, netting in general, we have taken, taken the netting uh, technology one step further uh, in, by incorporating uh, photoselective filtration capacity into the, um, the netting materials. And this was done uh, together in a joint uh, um, uh, collaboration with Polysac Plastics Industries in, in Israel for the last uh, 18 years or so. 
Um, and uh, so we, we developed uh, and, and studied this uh, new approach, new at that time, 18 years ago. I was surprised that not to find any indications for uh, such an approach in the literature. Uh, under, and uh, we, we tested it uh, under field conditions, in, mostly in Israel, in ornamentals, in vegetables, and in uh, fruit trees. Uh, photoselective netting was uh, later, uh, more recently, uh, studied also in Italy and Spain and Germany, Chile, Brazil, China, and uh, recently here in, the, uh, in, in uh, Washington state. Um, some experiments were done also in Florida, in the East Coast, uh, but really uh, not that much so far in the States. Uh, we accumulated, m we are accumulating more and more information about the technology as we go along uh, regarding uh, crop responses to the technology, regarding uh, including common tra uh, trends uh, of the re plant responses versus crop specific behavior under the various uh, net products, uh, benefits versus drawbacks. Uh, implications on microclimate, which is an uh, important part of the technology, and pest and disease control, etc. All these are related to, to the technology. Now, what is unique about uh, the photoselective netting? Well, the light, that, uh, the light under the nets, the photoselective nets, is both spectrally modified and scattered unlike the common uh, black nets that do not modify the spectrum, neither do they alter the uh, light scattering, or the clear nets uh, that are used in insect proof, traditional insect proof uh, or hail protection, that do not modify the spectrum, but they do increase scattering. The photoselective nets do both, uh, modify the spectrum and um, scatter the light. The spectral modification uh, by these uh, nets is um, aimed to promote physiological, specific physiological responses in the crops, while the scattering improves the uh, penetration of this spectrally modified light, uh, its penetration into the inner most shaded uh, uh, parts of the canopy, plant canopy. Now, just to illustrate in a very simple cartoon uh, the difference between black nets, shade nets, and a photoselective net. Uh, black shade nets, uh, the light beams that are reaching the black threads um, are fully absorbed, fully blocked. It is only the light that goes through the holes uh, that um, is passing the, the net. And this uh, light remains unchanged. Um, the hole doesn't know that around it there is some plast black plastic. So uh, basically, the bottom line is the resulting light has the same spectral composition and the same relative content of diffuse versus direct light as the uh, natural light at that uh, time. Uh, while um, the uh, photoselective net, and I illustrated here the red net, but uh, it's true for all the other ones. Uh, the, in this case, light beams that uh, uh, hit the uh, plastic threads, they become both uh, spectrally modified and scattered. So they leave the, um, they leave the, the net when they are 100% uh, diffused light. Uh, what, and some of it is also reflected, and this has implications on uh, insects that are approaching the net. Uh, I, if I will have time, I'll touch upon it only very briefly on this uh, aspect. Like the black net, the holes don't know that they are surrounded by a red or yellow or blue uh, threads. Uh, the light that is passing through the holes remain unchanged. So basically we end up 
with plants that are exposed to a mixture of a modified and unmodified light. The modified is the light that is filtered through the uh, colored uh, th uh, plastic threads and the unmodified is the part that goes through the holes. And the mixture can be uh, adjusted during uh, manufacturing to fit the needs of each uh, crop once we know what the needs are. Uh, what are the spectra? We uh, measure the spectra, if you see on the left hand side, uh, we measure it by spectral radiometer that it is either fully exposed and thus measures both a uh, direct and uh, indirect light, or we block the um, uh, we, we can block the uh, sensor from direct light and then we measure only scattered light. And the result looks uh, like this. This is a, a typical uh, spectra that was uh, taken for a specific uh, experiment uh, where we tested um, pearl and red and yellow compared with the black common practice um, net that is used in pepper, for example, um, uh, bell peppers in Israel. And um, you see that um, there is some changes, but it is much more amplified when you look only at the diffuse light, uh, the spectra look like that. When the pearl uh, starts to, um, uh, has uh, a typical um, spectrum of the diffuse light uh, starting as of 380, 390 nanometers and up. The yellow uh, transmits light, scattered light, uh, as of 540 and up, and the red net uh, from 600 nanometers and up. And what you can see here also is that the black shade net, the spectrum of the black net, is exactly the same as the natural no net, only uh, less so by 30%, but uh, the spectrum remains the same. Uh, so, um, and uh, I um, have put here the uh, regions of the spectrum that are absorbed by each uh, of this collection of nets and the part that is transmitted and on the uh, right hand column, uh, just the relative uh, capacity for light scattering. This, uh, is, uh, these are examples of the, our experimental sites in different uh, crops. Um, uh, one of the uh, sites for um, table grapes, bananas, avocado, citrus, apples, uh, peaches, and we had more. Uh, this is just to illustrate that the um, experimental sites are usually quite uh, large. We need large-scale uh, sites uh, because of a lot of uh, overlapping uh, between in the light, not only the direct light that uh, overlaps from one treatment to uh, net treatment to the other, but also the scattered light that moves even further. So we really have uh, to to set up large scale um, experimental uh, sites. And um, let's now um, I, I've made a whole a list of the major a kind of summary in a nutshell of the major effects that we have observed during uh, the years of experimenting uh, the color, uh, color net, photoselective netting in, uh, in fruit trees. Um, and uh, so the, the traits that respond differentially to photoselective netting include, and then I'll, I'll list them here and then try to um, give examples to uh, some of them as we go along. Uh, photosynthesis and vegetative development are uh, differentially affected by the nettings. Uh, fruit set, fruit size, time to maturation is either uh, early or late. Fruit coloration, fruit quality, water use efficiency, pest and disease uh, control or infestation. Uh, plant resistance to biotic and abiotic stresses, 
And all these uh, uh, good, uh, uh, potentially good responses come on top of the uh, um, protective function of the netting, be it protection from hail or from wind or from pests uh, or from too much uh, radiation. So let's start with the vegetative responses and photosynthesis. What you can see here on the left hand side is the light measured power light, 400 to 700 nanometers under the net, different nettings relative to the, the um, green line is the unnetted control. And you see that uh, we reduce significantly the amount of light, the uh, flow rate, but on the right hand side, if you look at the photosynthesis rate at the leaf level, um, you actually, even though you have less light, you have higher uh, photosynthesis uh, rate or CO2 uptake rate. And this is the beauty of, of the netting, it is especially in Israel and probably also here, when, you ha when we have most of the year uh, too much light actually. So reducing it in a, in a clever way can lead to um, enhanced uh, photosynthetic activity. Um, C13 isotope assays also indicated uh, more stomatal opening throughout the season. Um, and this was in this respect, especially uh, the red net showed uh, more stomatal opening when we compared several nets of the same shading factor. Uh, and definitely compared to the uh, unnetted control. Um, still in vegetative response, uh, there are general trends. And generally speaking, tree vigor is enhanced by, by the net covering, whatever net you, you are using to cover your um, um, orchard in both deciduous and subtropical and tropical crops. And so most of the effect uh, uh, of the netting, the initial effect, uh, can be related uh, to a less specific um, uh, effect of the nets. Uh, the mere shading and the climate uh, change, microclimate in the orchard, in the netted orchard. However, on top of that, uh, we um, um, would usually find the yellow and red nets to uh, be more, uh, to stimulate more the uh, vigor of the trees or the plants under the netting, while the blue tends to uh, be the least um, vigorous stimulant in fruit trees. Um, and um, the enhanced uh, vegetative vigor, sometimes is, uh, growers are not so crazy about it. Uh, it's not a desired response in some cases, uh, but uh, it can be coped with if you have other benefits that would justify having to cope with um, uh, growth uh, regulation. This is an example from uh, ornamentals. Uh, for um, You can see that the length distribution, in this case Lysianthus, um, uh, it illustrates the uh, uh, reduction in uh, length of the stems of the uh, cut flowers by the uh, blue net. Uh, while the re uh, red and the yellow take it to uh, longer stems and also a uh, thicker um, in diameter. But uh, some, I brought this slide, uh, this ex um, example to illustrate that we usually find amongst the, uh, uh, comparing the yellow and the red, that it would, the yellow will usually uh, be slightly more stimulating compared with the red for the same shading factor. And uh, this is an uh, interesting uh, point uh, that I will not dwell upon uh, more here, but uh, do we find the same behavior in uh, fruit trees? So I brought here, the answer is in some cases, yes. And I brought here the Example of kiwi fruit uh, uh, res uh, research that was done in, in uh, near Naples in Italy, um, 
and uh, the result is shown here by the pruning, uh, um, weighing the uh, pruning material uh, on a yearly basis, and uh, you can see that the kiwi fruit, as if he, it read the, uh, the, the the papers that we published in uh, in ornamentals. Uh, what you can see here through three years, consecutive years, the Again, the, the green here is the unnetted control. The blue net reduced consistently the uh, uh, vegetative vigor, while the red uh, was the most uh, stimulant. Uh, here, we did not have um, yellow. Uh, I would mention regarding, if we are talking about kiwi fruit, the red also increased fruit size, uh, was the best in increase, increasing fruit size, as well as the dry matter content, which in, in kiwi fruit, I learned, is an important parameter uh, commercially. So it had additional benefits, even though it might create uh, more necessity to prune a little more or do some other means of growth regulation. Um, Later te field tests indicated that uh, the yellow even uh, gave even better results, slightly better results than the red. And I'm told, I've not been there recently, that yellow anti-hail netting is becoming more and more common, a common practice uh, in southern Italy. So they need to cover to do the netting to protect from hail, but then by using a specific uh, optimized uh, net, they can gain more benefits in addition to the protection from uh, hail. Uh, okay, uh, just another point uh, related which might be of interest to you, vegetative uh, responses in nursery. Uh, here things go much faster. And this is an example that I took from a uh, banana uh, plants that were um, propagated in uh, tissue culture and then uh, moved for three weeks uh, for hardening uh, under 50% shading. And you can see the difference here in the plants uh, only after three weeks of being covered by either a black or a red net, both of 50% shading. And you can see both the canopy of the plants from the red net uh, is much larger and even more so the root system um, is by far more uh, developed. And this ha sometimes the response is really very fast. Uh, not the case in, in orchards. We need more patience for the, to see the responses. Okay, let's move to fruit size. Uh, fruit size, um, in, uh, this is an example in Golden Delicious. We obtained uh, uh, enhanced uh, fruit size uh, and the um, um, uh, yield went up really very significantly, but here the uh, correlation was not so much to the color, but to the capacity of light scattering. And um, you see that um, this is uh, light scattering, capacity relative light scattering, and the most scattering is the pearl net that I mentioned, and indeed it was the most, uh, it enhanced fruit size the most, and um, this is the size distribution. Now, does it, is it a rule of thumb? Does it happen always in all crops, all cultivars? Well, no, not really. It depends. We learned that it would depend what is the genetic traits that this particular cultivar comes uh, with. Um, because side by side to the Golden Delicious, we tested a top red um, red delicious, uh, starking, and um, in this case, none of the nets increased fruit size, but um, uh, this can be uh, easily explained. While the uh, golden delicious is very productive, uh, produces uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, fruit, but it 
uh, the uh, rate limiting step is the canopy photosynthesis to feed all this fruit. Uh, the top red is um, very vegetative to begin with and uh, low in productivity and therefore increasing the vegetative development, the photosynthesis doesn't really help. It <coughs> pushes it even further to a less productive uh, result. So again, there are trends that are common trends uh, with regards to the um, res physiological responses, but the final re uh, uh, horticultural result would depend on your, uh, the limiting uh, factor in your uh, specific uh, crop or species or even cultivar. So I brought this as an ex just as an example to uh, illustrate that point. And so um, as a result, some of in, in mixed um, uh, cultivar orchards of apples, some growers in Israel and in Spain ended up, ended up covering the rows uh, that are uh, one cultivar by one uh, net that was optimized and uh, the other rows by, uh, well, in this case, it was pearl and red net to uh, fine tune the uh, outcome of that uh, mixed uh, cultivar orchard. Um, okay, fruit size, a different story relates to um, table grapes. Uh, berry size, generally speaking, in, in um, table grapes is larger when you n cover them by nets, mostly because of uh, microclimate improvement, at least in the climate, in Israeli climate, hot and arid. However, the largest berries consistently were found under the yellow net uh, that uh, uh, increased berry and cluster size even further. Uh, more than all the other ones, the gray net tended to reduce size. And um, well, we ask ourselves why, and uh, it turns out, at least the current working hypothesis is the, the yellow, as I mentioned, is a super stimulant of vegetative growth. So it also uh, elongates the ranges of the, ranges of the, of the uh, clusters. And if you elongate the uh, rakes and uh, then you reduce the competition, the space competition between the berries. And uh, this was actually an observation made by the growers that were started using these uh, um, um, nets. So it can save, in this case, a lot of uh, jib treatment or uh, thinning the clusters or uh, um, trimming them. So a lot of work that is used to reach large berry size under uh, regular conditions. So that's uh, another um, illustration. Time to fruit maturation. Uh, this is also, uh, so we'll stay with the table grapes. It's a very exciting story. Uh, we uh, found that uh, in the Jordan Valley when, where they grow early uh, cultivars and uh, for uh, the, that are um, uh, produced for the European uh, market, uh, producing in April and May. Um, then uh, the uh, name of the game is uh, advancing maturation and what we found in uh, the experiment there was that the uh, white nets, the pearl, the white, uh, advanced maturation and the um, maturation is determined by um, sugar content of the berries uh, exclusively, while at the same time, at the same orchard, um, a vineyard, the red delayed maturation. And this uh, is also illustrated here in a, a, a trial in the Arava Valley, which is even more um, arid and hot. And the, so you see here that the um, um, 
Harvest, the earliest harvest is under the, red, the, the white net, the delayed one is under the red, and the yellow, again, is doing similar to the red, but even more, even further delaying. Uh, so both effects are, um, actually we are happy whenever we find the distinct effect because whatever is not, cannot be applied to in one case can be applied to another crop or another case. So currently, uh, commercial, uh, commercially, uh, all the um, vineyards um, of the early cultivars in the Jordan Valley in Israel are covered by white nets. And um, in the center, um, the pearl, white, and clear nets are used for advancing maturation and the red for delaying maturation. Uh, so some of the growers would cover half the vineyard with, uh, if it's a mid-season uh, cultivar, half the vineyard with red net and half with the white net so they can expand the harvesting uh, season. Uh, and the late cultivars would be covered by mostly by the red uh, net. Uh, again, the, and this comes together with protecting uh, the fruit from sunburns, wind scars, birds, and increasing uh, the, the berry uh, size and quality, and improving the uniformity, especially in the colored uh, clusters. And um, the um, yellow, uh, again, it was uh, uh, found by the growers, they, uh, since the yellow is a super stimulant, they are using it to rejuvenate very old vineyards that otherwise they would have to uproot and uh, replace. So, and they reported to me that uh, in one season they could uh, uh, gain back the high productivity of a very old, uh, 40, 50 years old vineyards just by covering them in with a yellow net. Yeah, they went back to the high production uh, of the orchard when it was young. So they are uh, using it for that. Um, fruit coloration and uniformity, I will just illustrate uh, right um, away the practical application by growers. This is a report from uh, Turkey. Uh, they had to cover because of hail and wind and frost damage, so they needed to cover. And by our advice, they uh, covered with a red anti-hail net. And they report they are very happy about it because in addition, and you can see on the left-hand side cover orchards and uh, on the right-hand side uncovered traditional ones after a rough winter and there is hardly any fruit left uh, in the traditional way, but the covered is not only uh, kept all the fruit on, on the trees, but they report that coloration, the red coloration is very much improved under the uh, red netting. So, um, and this is uh, New Zealand, similar case, although uh, they did not really measure uh, anything as far as I know, because there is no researcher devoted to netting in, in New Zealand. But we took these uh, photos uh, there, again, uh, apple orchards, uh, part covered by white nets and part uh, by red nets. I asked them why and how do they choose, and they say this is what the a distributor from Australia um, recommended to us. Uh, we didn't test it. So, um, but uh, I guess somebody must have uh, tested it in Australia. I'm not so familiar with that. Okay. Um, water use efficiency. Um, I'll just touch upon it. There is a huge huge potential uh, to use the netting for water saving. Uh, banana is the extreme case in Israel, um, in the Jordan Valley, and uh, around Lake of Galilee. It's very hot there. The banana drink a lot of water there. And they, uh, we can save up to 40% uh, water uh, irrigation 
in bananas. Usually in deciduous fruits, we observed uh, in the water saving in the range of 15 to 20, 25 for the most percent of uh, water consumption uh, saving by uh, the netting. Um, pest and disease control, um, I'll give, uh, well, pests are deterred from landing on highly reflective uh, materials uh, and they that reflect about 20% uh, of sunlight or more. The pearl and white nets uh, reduce, indeed, because of that, reduce pest infestation uh, by fruit flies, aphids, white flies, and um, their pest-borne viral diseases. This was, uh, we've studied in pepper and, uh, and tomatoes. A uh, yellow color attracts the aphids and white flies to land and stay uh, and thus diverting them from the host uh, plants. So the end result is reduced infestation under the yellow nets. Uh, even more interesting or less in uh, not less interesting is the, what happens under the... Um, oh, and this is, uh, even though the holes of the nets are large enough to allow the, the penet free penetration of these pests. The pearl um, and, the, and the yellow nets also advance the plant resistant to biotic resistance to biotic stresses like uh, fungal diseases. And uh, this is um, expressed by less decay both pre and post harvest. So the, uh, the peppers remember what kind of net they were growing under. And if they grew under the net, uh, under the, the pearl net, they would have much less uh, decay during storage. Um, so this is just the illustration of uh, viral disease transmittance by uh, pepper pests on the left hand side and the tomato pest on the right hand side um, and uh, you can see that the least uh, infected was uh, the pearl net and similar case in pomegranates uh, that's um, much much less um, uh, pest trapping <coughs> under the uh, white net um, even though it was uh, an open construction, mostly covering the uh, top and uh, two, three of the sides, but it was not fully closed. And besides, the, the uh, holes, as I said, are quite large, the holes of the netting. So, um, and as I mentioned, all of these goodies come on top of additional protective uh, functions and I just wanted to touch upon one relevant point and this is uh, sunburn protection. Um, these are um, um, thermal images of, um, of apple trees that we took uh, for trees under the uh, netted, uh, in this case gray net, on the, the upper left uh, photo thermal photo versus the unnetted and you see the brighter colors indicate higher temperature of both the uh, canopy, the, the foliage, the, um, the uh, branches and most prominently the fruit is um, by far um, colder under the netting uh, in the net house. And the result is much less um, sunburns. And actually, one can say that um, um, the shade netting is the most efficient solution for, for, uh, to prevent sunburns. And sunburn protection, though, does not, we did not find it to, be de to depend on the color of, of the net, but merely on the percent of shading. Um, the green columns are uh, two controls and uh, the 
the sunburn frequency in trees of uh, control are netted uh, compared and uh, here you see uh, uh, I indicated the uh, net the shading capacity so you see that the, we had in that experiment a one 15 percent shading white net and uh, it provided protection but not full protection uh, while in all the other nets uh, the protection was really very good, sometimes 90% uh, reduction of the uh, sunburns. This was in Golden Delicious, uh, similar uh, results were obtained for Granny Smith, both are very suscept susceptible to uh, sunburns. So in summary, uh, Netting is really a great solution for uh, crop protection, especially, but not only, uh, for orchards, because you cannot uh, take orchards into greenhouses. Or, uh. However, in order to make this technology cost-benefit, because it's not, it doesn't come cheap, uh, so in order to make it, the technology uh, cost-benefit and the return of the investment in the net house uh, as quickly as possible, we need to maximize the physiological benefits uh, that we uh, provide by the netting and the whole horticultural performance of the, of the netted crop. Um, so photo, the photoselective netting was uh, developed exa exactly to do that. Um, and it is uh, so that it is targeted towards specific physiological responses side by side with providing the physical, the required physical protection uh, to in, the, in each particular case. Um, by photoselective netting, then we can turn the must into a desire. Now, um, there are common responses that we uh, know by now by a lot of studies. Uh, common responses to photoselective netting to specific colors uh, that can already uh, help us to anticipate the kind of response uh, if we are going to apply it to a new uh, crop or in a new area. Uh, but there is also um, there are also variations, as I try to demonstrate here, just uh, in a touch. Um, and these, uh, the variations uh, can be, can relate to the species or cultivar, uh, or to the uh, climate, uh, your uh, particular geographical uh, region. So by learning from both the similarities and the differences, we can adjust the photoselective filtration to fit best each uh, crop and its uh, specific cultivation, cultivation environment. Um, now, just a last point. Um, pull, uh, um, covering the orchard by netting is a revolution for the, if you are a tree, this is a revolution. It changes the whole environment, the light and microclimate and other aspects, uh, pest control. Um, it's a new, it's a new environment. It's as if you have a new crop. Um, so sometimes um, adjustments and fine tunings uh, in the uh, agrotechnical practices might be required for in order uh, for us to get the most out of the of the netting so if there are um, five positives and one negative response we should better deal with the negative response and um, and adjust it so that we can uh, benefit from the overall um, netting experience um, and just a take-home lesson, uh, I usually end up my uh, lectures with uh, uh, stating that the quality of the light within the shade can make a lot of difference. Uh, but with regards to, to uh, fruit trees, to orchards, 
I added even at very low shading, uh, 10 to 20 percent, which for me was kind of a surprise because I started uh, the studies on photoselective netting with um, ornamentals that are shaded by 50 percent. 70, 80 percent shading, so every response was really very dramatic and uh, usually the, uh, the ornamentals respond uh, faster. Uh, but the main issue is that we have a lot of shading, so we modify most of the light. Um, while uh, when we moved to fruit trees, we had to lower the shading capacity to 10, between 10 to 30 percent. And the su great surprise for me was that even under very low shading, the photoselective netting can uh, induce quite significant uh, responses that are color specific. And um, just to acknowledge uh, my many, many collaborators during the years, and these are fellow scientists, extension uh, experts, students, research assistants, regional R&D centers that participated in most of my studies, and polysac plastic industry with which I have fruitful collaboration for many years. Thank you for your attention. So we have, we have time for questions both here in Wenatchee and at the um, other locations. So, so I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a few questions here from Wenatchee first. I'll ask you to repeat the question, if you would, please, oh. just to make sure that the audience oh, okay. can hear the question. Yeah. And then we'll take some questions from the uh, other locations as well, okay? So anyone here have a question to start? Betsy? Yeah, I noticed a couple of your experiments had gray netting. Um, what's, what was the thinking behind gray netting? Is it just halfway between black and white, or was there some special property that you were looking for? Yeah. Lucky enough, we were open to experiment. Ah, um, the question was uh, why gray, gray. gray netting. Uh, why did we use gray netting? Is it just halfway between black and white. No, totally not. It's a different, there, it's a special chromophore. Uh, the company don't expose the uh, exact nature of the pigments that they incorporate, but um, we examined them. Uh, the gray net had, so we were open-minded to, uh, to test in the beginning any different uh, net that they offered. Uh, some of them they produced upon my request, but some they developed by themselves and say this might be interesting. And it turned out to be very interesting. Um, in, um, uh, we, we found out that the gray net, uh, we, uh, it's not a mixture of white and, and black uh, pigments. No, not at all. It's, uh, uh, and uh, it enhanced branching. We found that it, it tends to enhance branching, reduce apical dominance, and induce a lot of side branches, short and, and uh, many side branches. Unlike the red net that would, or, and, the, and the yellow, that will uh, stimulate uh, uh, elongation and width of the, of the major uh, stems, the gray tends to um, enhance um, side branching. We don't know why. I, I tried to find a physiological um, explanation for that. For the time being, I don't know of any. Well, what uh, we could um, measure was that it is the most absorbing uh, net in the uh, near infrared region, not in the visible, but beyond. So working hypothesis has to do with near because this is what we see as a specific uh, feature of this net over uh, the, all the other ones. And um, I don't know of any near, uh, near infrared uh, receptor, but um, somehow it might be related, I don't know. Um, but uh, for that reason, it's the best um, 
thermal protection, protector uh, out of this. We, we measured lower, the lowest uh, leaf temperature uh, under this uh, net. This is why I brought the um, thermal image from the gray net because it was the more uh, extreme one. Um, but uh, in, um, for foliage crops in Florida, which uh, uh, suffer from heat uh, over, I mean, heat load, uh, the gray net or silver net that uh, they call it now is uh, uh, got into uh, commercial use for that particular purpose. Uh, can I have a follow-up question to that? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it, for instance, if you wanted uh, some increase in vigor, like from a red or a yellow net, but um, what you were getting was too much response, can you, in the manufacturing, can you reduce that to, say, light yellow or, yeah. or, or pale red also? Yes. In order to, because you said shade was related simply to, or pardon me, sunburn was related just to sh the amount of shade. Yeah. So you can't just change the proportions without affecting that. Yeah, you need to sum up the uh, responses that you might want to gain out of your particular netting and then, and then ask the producer to design a net to your uh, specifications. So you can, uh, well, we have, uh, we have a specific uh, case in citrus in Israel where they produced for us very light um, red net, uh, but not by reducing the amount, the concentration of the pigment within the plastic, but rather by weaving a transparent, clear uh, thread with a red one. So it's another way to, to manipulate the shading factor for the same spectral uh, Manipulation. Okay. Um, what are growers doing with crops that need pollination by bees? I mean, how, how are we accomplishing pollination under nets? The question related to pollination and uh, how uh, the netting is relating, related to that. Um, we did not find a much of an effect uh, when we had uh, the apple experiment with uh, four and a half meters, no, maybe five meters high, a horizontal roof uh, of the netting. Uh, so probably there was enough space for the bees to, and we, we had a, a bee expert to follow bee activity, and there was no effect of the different nets, not the different colors, and not even the netting itself compared with the open, with the unnetted control. However, in other cases, I was, uh, the, when the netting was, uh, they started, the growers started to apply it, they were concerned that maybe still in some crops or maybe if they put the net uh, lower, uh, they might run into trouble. So their solution was to apply the net uh, on after pollination, uh, early May or so. Uh, so this is a solution because in any way they pull out the, uh, the nets in uh, towards November or so. Uh, because sometimes uh, in northern Israel they have, uh, we, we get uh, snow and uh, the net house wouldn't hold the snow. It handles well hail, but not really snow. So, yeah, if uh, a problem with, uh, with bees uh, might be suspected, then to be on the safe side, uh, this is a reasonable solution. Yeah. Do we have any questions from the uh, off-campus locations? Yeah, I've got uh, one here in Yakima. Um, mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of the data didn't have uh, green netting. Was that because you 
didn't try it or because it didn't have interesting results? Uh, both are correct. In some of the trials we incorporated the green and did not get any um, in the early stages in ornamentals and we did not uh, get any interesting results. Uh, it was uh, halfway between uh, black and, uh, and the red net. So, and whenever you apply, uh, you, you design a new experiment, you are pushed uh, between your budget and the number of repetitions and the number of treatments. So we, in the, follow in the later trials, we focused on the, the nets that gave the more interesting and cl clear cut uh, uh, results. So this is why we skipped. We prefer to have one more repetition rather than add a less interest, what seemed to be less interesting uh, net, the green net. But you know, um, it's worth uh, trying if there is, but it's, the, the spectrum is, uh, is uh, somewhat similar to the blue, uh, the spectrum of the blue, it has a peak rather than a cutoff, a kind of a cutoff filter like the, the um, pearl and the red and the yellow behave like a cutoff filter and while the blue has a peak uh, of uh, transmittance and the, the, re uh, the green is rather similar to the blue but it is red shifted to a slightly longer wavelength but it covers probably the less uh, affecting uh, um, region, uh, spectral region so uh, we would have liked to include it in more experiments but there is always the budget uh, dictating the size and the number of repetitions that we can afford a number of treatments. Have you ever tried two at once? Like two colors at once? Sorry? Have you ever tried using two colors at once, two different ones in the same netting or sandwich them? Well, yes, they made... Uh, uh, did we try to have uh, more than one color in one um, net? Uh, there were a few products along the way that we uh, then skipped. One of them was purple, which was a mixture of red and, and uh, blue. And uh, didn't give any, anything interesting. Uh, but, but, so at the same, mixing uh, colors doesn't really make sense because you then go to the neutral, uh, to, the, to the black. Uh, however, there are cases where growers uh, apply different nets at different phenological stages. And this is very exciting. For example, orchids. Uh, some orchid growers, uh, well, that's what I learned, they want uh, slow uh, the vegetative development in the first uh, stage of, the, uh, of growing. And so they apply the blue net. And then as uh, flowering is uh, set, they move it aside and then they push, they want and they cover with a red net to stimulate uh, the, the growth. So this is already, I mean, we, we provide the tools and then m many growers, really the more advanced ones, take the tools and uh, continue even to the next uh, step, yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking was the different stages of how you can manipulate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, graphs on uh, photo, uh, photosynthesis uh, uh, efficiency. I noticed the netting had a, a, a low peak or a, a, a valley in you know, around one o'clock, where it's uh, uncontrolled uh, and not. Uh, any explanation why? Well, uh, most of the nets, uh, well, this was one particular. Um, graph out of uh, many, so I will relate to the general uh, trend that we experienced. Uh, in many crops you have the midday drop 
uh, where stomata are closed uh, around uh, noon, between noon and 2 p.m. Um, and this would be in the open. And many of the nets would eliminate this drop and uh, midday drop and just continue, uh, keep the stomata open. And we actually measured uh, the stomata uh, tend to stay open throughout the day uh, so that um, there is a more higher photosynthesis uh, um, going on uh, without uh, the midday drop. So it's not only that the rate is higher, but in many cases uh, the, there is no uh, stomatal uh, closure in uh, midday. And this is probably one of the advantages of the, of the netting. Uh, I actually had two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, what effect does the shape of the nets have? I noticed some of the pictures had just flat horizontal netting and others had more tented uh, shape yeah. netting. And then my other one was, uh, how durable are these nets? How long do they last? Okay, so the question was um, um, related to the shape of the roof, whether we call it zigzag versus a hor flat horizontal. Uh, in my, uh, and the other one was durability of yeah, the net. Durability. Okay, uh, start first with the shape of the roof. Um, we, this was in some cases not my choice. Originally, well, when we started doing netting experiments in, uh, in fruit trees, the growers were horrified and um, then that everything will fall down and uh, they had the idea that uh, hail protection is only possible when you have a zigzag uh, shape, which is uh, not true at all. There are all kinds of uh, means of uh, the, the hail clips and the, or a zipper or there are different ways to handle um, heavy hail. Uh, when it occurs uh, without, and uh, the zigzag shape is not, um, um, doesn't do a better job, um, generally speaking. I don't like the zigzag shape for the experimentation because it induces more shading, uh, because light goes through, um, it depends what orientation is the, the construction, but it, whether it is east-west or north-south, um, in both cases it will induce more shading because uh, in some hours of the day the sun will go through two layers. And, uh, and also wind and, uh, um, and the, um, with regards to micro keeping the microclimate, it induces mini um, micro environment of the microclimate inside. It's, it induces uh, heterogeneity in the... So I would prefer, um, and I advise the growers also, to keep, to have a uh, um, flat roof and uh, keep a meter, meter and a half above the trees to allow uh, ventilation. It lowers the, the uh, application of the netting breaks the wind velocity quite significantly also if you just put a horizontal top roofing without the walls. Uh, so it's very efficient in reducing w wind velocity, but you still want good air exchange, uh, gas exchange in the orchard. So yeah, but um, f in some cases the grower that had the trial in his uh, vineyard or orchard insisted on a specific uh, um, shape, in that case the zigzag shape. So we went along with this, but I didn't like it. Uh, with regard to durability, the, uh, typically the nets will hold, um, the warranty is between five to eight years, it depends what kind of nets. Uh, but this is for year-round application. If you are using them only half the year or seven months, then of course you would double or almost double the, 
life uh, span of the of the net. Okay. okay, one more time. Let's give our thanks to uh, Dr. Chalk. Thank you.